Welcome to the Prayer Link, everyone. I'm Wendy Griffith. And I am Charlene Aaron. And so much to pray so about. So much to pray about. So definitely. much to pray about. We're going to get right into it. In 2019, there's been more mass shootings in America than the number of days so far this year. Two deadly rampages, as you know, just 13 hours apart, struck our nation this weekend, killing 29 people and leaving dozens more wounded. That marks 251 shootings in just 216 days, according to a gun violence research group. Horrific. In two cities, El Paso, Texas, and Dayton, Ohio, are still gripped by the shock and grief. It took just 30 seconds in Ohio and zero bullets in Texas for officers to stop the two shooters. In El Paso, investigators are calling the shooting an act of domestic terrorism. The shooter saying he hated immigrants. Investigators have not yet determined the motive of the Ohio shooting, but high school classmates say that the shooter had a hit list. Both shootings come less than a week after a night. 19-year-old gunman killed three people and injured 13 others in the popular festival in California. The president says he wants to legislate legislation to provide stronger background checks for gun users. He called the recent mass shootings evil attacks and says that unity must replace hate. In one voice, our nation must condemn racism, bigotry, and white supremacy. These sinister ideologies must be defeated. Hate has no place in America. Hatred warps the mind, ravages the heart, and devours the soul. Open wounds cannot heal if we are divided. We must seek real, bipartisan solutions. And joining us now to share some insight is Pastor Sharon Nesbitt. She has a church in Plano, Texas, and is also on President Trump's Faith Advisory Council. Welcome to Prayer Link, Pastor Nesbitt. Hey, thank you so much for inviting us. Well, first of all, this is a sobering moment for the entire nation. How are people in Texas responding? Well, I'm, I'm actually in Arkansas, uh, and, and we have a, a work in Texas also. But a shock, shock, a grief, a pain, agony, uh, asking questions. So I believe that people are, again, asking uh, how did we get here? Why are we still dealing with this? And uh, in a, one of the greatest countries in, uh, in, in the world, we're still grappling with how can this still affect our nation as great as we are? We're still dealing with uh, violence at this level. And, and how can you explain what is happening spiritually in our nation right now? Well, it's the spiritual decline. It's uh, where we've allowed the enemy and the demonic to ramp, uh, to run rampant in our nation. Uh, it's a call back to prayer. Our responsibility as spiritual leaders is not only to pray, but to forge into action things that we know that can help our community. Uh, when we talk about mental health, when we talk about gun laws and everything that we've been talking about, it's really a spiritual issue more than a physical issue. It's because of the spiritual decline that we see in our country uh, that we've got to make God uh, great again in our country. And he's got to be first to get again in our country. Prayer has to be uh, at the forefront of all of our minds. And I'm just talking about not just, you know, little cute prayers, but prayers of warfare. This is his warfare in the realm of the spirit. Amen. It sure is. Well, Pastor Sharon, you're part of the president's faith advisory council. He's now calling for strong, stronger gun measures, but he also says America must stop the glorification of violence in our society. What do you say about that? Well, I, I think that's it again. Uh, it's the enemy's uh, job uh, to go ahead and uh, project uh, all of this in our community where the church has been lackadaisical. But we also have to make a spiritual stance to do some things that nothing's going to happen in the physical unless we do something in the spirit. And so we can talk about all of the things that are naturally happening, physically happen. But until we rule some things in the spirit dimension, all of the things that we've been talking about will never come to pass because we're trying to legislate things in the natural when we have not legislated in the realm of the spirit. And if we look at the Bible, we see everything that happened in the political realm had 
some kind of backing from a spiritual dimension. And so as we begin to legislate spiritual altars and pray and dedicate ourselves back to God and to the throne of God and the rulership of his kingdom, we're going to always be looking for legislation from a man, which it cannot happen. It has to come from God. Amen. And Pastor Nezit, you're talking about prayer on a show that's dedicated to prayer. Second Chronicles 714 comes to mind where we're talking about re re restoring prayer. It really begins with the church, the people of God. And so we want you to really take a moment, Pastor Nesbitt, to pray for our country right now and for the church. Okay, thank you. Father, we thank you. We come before you, first of all, on behalf of the families that had tremendous loss and tragedy and those that affected the victims. We ask for your spirit of comfort and peace. But we ask you to forgive us where we have, as a nation, turned our back. Ask you to heal our nation and bring us back to the yes. place we honor you and we dedicate ourselves to you. We decree and declare the spirit of heavy, uh, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Father, we thank you that the laws of the kingdom will be enacted and forces over and above the laws of the land. And we thank you that you're sending your angels of protection. According to Psalms 91, we decree and declare that the Holy Spirit will arise and have victory over our land. We decree and declare that as we embrace you and enforce your kingdom protocols and your laws, that our nation will come back to a place of peace and reservation to you. Father, we thank you for your liberty, your freedom, your restoration, your healing, your deliverance, your uh, your reconciliation, your perfect rest, and your perfect will over our nation, that we synchronize with your will, that we come into the perfect harmony of who you are, and Father, that you will become Lord again over this nation, that every demonic entity that is lurking in the darkness will be exposed, no weapon formed against your people shall prosper, and we decree that the spirit of murder that has been loosed over our nation and every entity and every altar that service that that spirit will be decimated and but the fire of the Holy Ghost will begin to burn in the hearts of your people that we turn our hearts back to you that our minds will be resolute in you and we give you the glory the honor and the praise we pray for our president we pray for those that will make the laws those that can change it but we pray for the spiritual understanding and the revelation how to move in spiritual dimensions and move this nation to the place of peace and comfort and victory where we prosper above all that we call the churches and pastors to a real prayer uh, understanding and we legislate in your authority and your power with the blood of Jesus and we decree it in Jesus mighty name amen amen amen, amen. praise amen. God Powerful hallelujah prayer. thank you so much it is Pastor so. Sharon. amen Pastor Sharon Nesbitt, thank you for joining us. That was a wonderful, powerful prayer. And you are right. It starts in the spirit realm. It starts on our knees. Amen. That's where we're going to see change. Amen. God bless you. Yes. Blessings. Thank Amen. you. Amen. And coming up, a Danish man who's taking the gospel to the streets of the world to kickstart the last reformation. Young people, millennials, are flocking to church. It's not an exaggeration to say that we love to meet them and that we love to know their stories. Welcome back to The Prayer Link. And there is no doubt that we are heading into darker times. And some might even say that we're heading into the last days. Some do say, but one man is crying out for the church to wake up and become light in the darkness. And he is kickstarting believers to heal the sick, preach the gospel, cast out demons, and be led by the Holy Spirit. Take a look. What do it mean that the tomb is empty? It means that he's alive. So if he's alive, then we have relationship. Yeah. Lungs be restored again. Grow again in the name of Jesus Christ. Can you? Oh, Allah. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my movie number five. I knew that me, my family, and everyone around me needed to be baptized. They needed to, to draw closer to Jesus. And Torben Sundergaard produced The Last Reformation and has started a global movement by the same name. And he joins us to share more. Torben, welcome to The Prayer Link. Thank you. The Last Reformation, yeah. The Life, is a, is a sequel to your first movie, right? Tell yeah. us about it. First, the reason we call it The Last Reformation is because we 
The first reformation was with Martin Luther. Yeah. We saw that from Germany. Mm -hmm. But Martin Luther did not reform the church, the Catholic Church, back to the Book of Acts. Mm. We saw a few changes here and there, but where's the life? Mm. Where's the power of God? Where's the being led by the Holy Spirit? Where's the healing? Where's the cast now demon? Where's the preaching? Where's the baptism with full immersion? Right. All of this, Martin Luther did not reform. And we need a new reformation. And hopefully it's the last one before Jesus is coming back because he's coming back soon. Mm -hmm. And there's just a longing to come back to the real life we read about in the Bible. And Torben, you yeah. said this has kickstarted a global movement. Yeah. Tell us about that. We, God took us on a journey, me and my wife, many years ago, and we're still on a journey today. Mm -hmm. But in that journey, we start to ask a lot of questions. Why do you do church the way we do it? Mm -hmm. Like I've been working as evangelist, I've done church plant, but out in that desert, we looked back at our life and looked at the church from outside. And then we had the Bible and we look at the, the early church, the, the book of Acts, how they were living. And like something is wrong. Mm -hmm. Like, like yeah. I do ministry, I, I, I preach, but I didn't see this life. Yeah. At one time in our life, we came to a point, we lost everything and we came to that point, we have nothing more to lose. Let's wow. just say it as it is. Let's just give it out. And then we found out that when we start to say it, it just did something in people's hearts. And many people actually came to me and said, Torben, you just put words on what we already had in our heart. Mm -hmm. Something is wrong, something is happening right now. And, and it started with a book I wrote called Last Reformation and suddenly it became a movement that's all over the world, and now we are seeing hundreds of thousands of people healed. We've seen 10,000 people come to faith. And what is beautiful is it's through every believer. And I think that is the main thing. We have lost first the gospel, mm. we have lost, lost the life, we have lost the focus on discipleship, and the understanding that God wants to use every believer. Yeah. You don't have to be ordained, you don't have to be on seminary and Bible school. Preach. You can learn, mm. learn through discipleship to preach the gospel. You can learn through discipleship to heal the sick, to cast out demons. Yeah. And it don't have to happen in a platform in a church. It can happen on the living room. It can happen <laughs> yeah. all over. I was in Paris a year ago. We were staying outside the Eiffel Tower. Mm. And a girl came and we started to preach the gospel and a demon manifests. She fall down. She got set free from a demon outside the Eiffel Tower with a group of three, four hundred people came and standing you're around. Just, you're just standing outside the Eiffel Tower. Public, public. <laughs> I, look, I love it. And I would say, when I did the, when we saw the deliverance public there, I was like, Whew. but at the same time, <laughs> if you just take the Bible, you didn't, it happened out there. It happened amongst the people. They never took it inside a room and said, right. hey, na temple. now deliverance, you have to be 10 hours of counseling in a room. No, we, we counsel when they need counsel, but when we need to cast out demons, we cast out demons. Mm. Amen. And, and I think that has been lost and, and, we, and it's happening now. So, so, so tell me this, Torben, you are facing some persecution in Denmark. Yeah, yeah, tell us what's, what's been happening. Well, I love Jesus and I, 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 we have looked a lot about discipleship and Jesus has sent us to go out, and preach the gospel, heal us, cast out demons, all of that. Right together with that come persecution. Mm -hmm. And we have, of course, Jesus, he say, they will whip you in the synagogue. That is the religious people who has persecuted us. We have done that. The next thing he said that they will put us in front of council and court cases. We haven't experienced that, but it has been crazy in Denmark. So in be beginning of January, we experienced a massive persecution. And it actually ended up that we are seeing asylum in America now. Yes. We, we, the 24th of January, me and my family, we packed eight suitcases and we left Denmark. They have now put a law up in Denmark. They talked about me and the Danish government. They put a law by law is illegal to cast out demons in front of kids. <gasps> Unbelievable. Oh, mm. wow. In front of in kids. Front of, yeah, in front of kids are handicapped. Just yes. in front of and do it. Plus they have made a mental violence law and it's, it's just so crazy because... Wow. It's what Jesus said to do. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah it is. What the Bible but says. then they made a mental violence law. And how do you define mental violence? Like physical violence, you know if you hit somebody. Mental violence, they actually say in the Danish law that if you ground kids on a on longer period, that could be mental violence. Wow. wow. If you have kids who think they're homosexual and you as parents go, that could be mental violence. And, but the only thing they put in the law to define it, it was casting demons out. Wow. Well, does it look like you're going to be able to come here? Amazing. 
We don't know we'll yet. See. We're going to we, pray. It, it, We're going to pray for him. That's right. I, I would say I'm smiling. I'm excited of what God is doing. Mm. But last half years have been the most crazy experience. Like, I've always been proud of being Danish, have a Danish passport. We are traveling 30 countries. Of course. You don't want to leave your country. No. no. And I never imagined that this could happen. I think also my message to America is that if you never imagine it could happen, if nothing is changing now, mm -hmm. What I experienced in Denmark with the law changing and leaving country persecution is also going to happen in America as nothing is changing. I wish we had more time, we but we will be praying, praying and our viewers will be praying for definitely you Definitely well. praying for Torben. That's right. That's right. Thanks so much. Well, next you're going to hear about the tent ministry that experienced miracles, signs and wonders for some 21 years. Come home to the sounds of Southern Gospel from CBN Radio. You'll enjoy a rich Southern blend of bluegrass, classic gospel, and Southern gospel favorites like the Gaithers, the Crab Family, and bluegrass sounds like Mountain Faith. So make yourself at home with the all-new CBN Southern Gospel. Now at CBNRadio.com. Welcome back to the Prayer Link, everybody. Pastor Cheryl Leggett grew up in a small town called Vance, South Carolina. As the eldest of her six siblings, she often worked the cotton field with her grandfather. She later went into full-time ministry, hosting tent revivals in the same field where she once picked cotton. And for 21 years, she has seen a harvest of souls as well as numerous signs, wonders, and miracles. And Pastor Cheryl Leggett joins us now. Welcome to the show, Pastor Leggett. What a blessing. Amen. What a blessing and an honor to we be here so, with you. We are so, so excited yes. to have you with us. I just want to get into, first of all, you know, what was it like for you growing up in that small town in South Carolina? It was wonderful. We were a very close-knit family, mm. uh, a community that loved one another, that looked after each other, uh, many cousins. We played in the same field as my granddaddy grew cotton and different crops. <laughs> and eventually the tent was pitched for souls to come in to the kingdom of God. Amen. So uh, it was just wonderful. We didn't know anything about yeah. You were uh, a country girl. Country, country girl, girl at heart. At heart. At heart. Love big at family heart. gatherings. And every opportunity I get to go back to yes. South Carolina, mm. I'm there. Wow. Tell I'm us there. about this, you know, first of all, how you got saved. What was that like? I got saved at a very young age. I was in high school in the ninth grade. I had a praying grandmama. Mm. It's always a praying grandmother. A somewhere. praying Praise grandmama. God. She was 93 years of age when she went home to be with the Lord. And she would prophesy into my life mm. as a young girl coming up in high school. She would always teach me about holiness. Mm -hmm. She said, follow peace with all men, holiness without no man shall see the Lord. Mm -hmm. I did not realize what that really meant at that time. But she instilled much into me. She was a praying, holy sanctified woman of God. Woman of God. Amen. Amen. And you, you Amen. once worked right here at CBN as I a prayer worked, counselor. Tell I us about that. I right here at the 700 Club. Next month will mark 20 years that I have left 700 Club. And when I got out of the boat, so to speak, because <laughs> it was a comfort zone for me. Of course. God said, now I want you to go out into full-time ministry. Wow. And trust me. Amen. So it was, it was awesome while I was here as Praise well. God. And you celebrated also 21 years of tent ministry. Uh, how did you get started in tent ministry? I got started in tent ministry uh, many, many years ago through a man of God that prophesied into my life. And he said, I see you in an open field, wow, open man. air ministry. And I see souls coming Praise from the God. north, east, south, and the west. Amen. Oh, I love the fact that we're seeing some photos right now yeah. of under the tent South in South Carolina. Yes, South Carolina. Amen. Yes. Praise yes. God. And yes. tell us about some of the miracles that took place under oh, the tent. Wow. I understand there have been uh, so many people who've been touched and God has just so, moved in their so lives. So many miracles, so many healing. The people come hungry. Mm. They came expecting to mm. see a move of God, yes. a movement of God. I've seen them walk in with canes mm -hmm. and leave out with the cane. Praise Thank you, Jesus. I wow. see them come in in wheelchairs and get up and walk My out God. from the wheelchairs. Thank you, Jesus. I see the demonic being set free. Yes. 
I'm telling you, I've seen the drug lords being saved Hallelujah. and delivered. Wow. I've seen teenage prostitutes that will walk the street and, and, and was picked up by men that could have been killed, right. mm -hmm. but because of the grace of God and yeah. the prayer of God. Yeah. But when they came in the tent, mm. they wow. got delivered and set free. And I, to the glory of God. And I understand some people who have been touched by the tent ministry are now in ministry. In ministry, in ministry. One young lady, hallelujah, she is um, pastoring now. Wow. She built a brand new church from the ground up and she's reaching other lives. <laughs> Look at the fruit. For the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. And I understand that this ministry has not gone unchallenged. There's been some challenges oh that you've God. had, weather issues. Talk about some of the challenges. Weather that issues, um, uh, demonic forces, activities, mm -hmm. witches and warlocks. Wow. They will come in and sit on the front row. Wow. To try to do their whatever they want to do, but yeah. they couldn't do it. Couldn't yes. do it. Because yes. the Holy Ghost power locked it down. Yes. Shut it out. <laughs> Jesus. Because it's not about us. It's all about Jesus yes. and the soul. Yes. Praise Amen. God. Pastor Leggett, talk about the power of prayer as it relates to your ministry and doing all these things that Jesus told us to do and casting out demons. The power of prayer is so key. Yeah. So urgent. As a little girl, my grandmother, when we would go to her house and just bless the food, mm -hmm. it turned into a prayer <laughs> meeting. <laughs> the mashed potatoes were cold. The, the mashed potatoes were cold. <laughs> my God. I learned it from a very young age. Yes. Prayer is the key. Prayer is foundational. My God. Yeah. And Jesus said the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. How would you encourage Christians to get out of our comfort zone, out of our four walls of the church, and share the gospel, yes. you know, with the unsaved? Like we just heard our, our last guest, he's preaching in front of, front the, of the Eiffel, Eiffel Tower, Tower. <laughs> and you're preaching in open tents. I mean, how do we just share the gospel with our neighbors? When you love Jesus mm -hmm. and you have a relationship with him, yeah. you're going to know that's his heartbeat. Yes. He said, those that win souls is wise. wise. Mm -hmm. It's not about us. You cannot be afraid. The power of the Holy Spirit will go with you mm -hmm. and he will do the work through you. You have to have a, 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 a hunger for souls and, and a cry out to see this world is dying. Yes. And, if and you people, don't, if you huh? don't, you can pray to get that. You can pray to get it. Yes. God is no respect of person mm -hmm. for those that are hungry and thirsty. He will fill them Amen. Wow. Amen. every time. How would you encourage people to just to begin that process? What would you say if those who are watching you say, I've lost my zeal mm -hmm. to win souls? What would you say to them? I will say to them to uh, come to church. Mm -hmm. get, get, get around the fire. Get around the fire. Get go. around the fire. Yes. The fire has gone out. Mm -hmm. It's dull. Mm -hmm. But when you get around that fire, there will be a rekindling. Ooh, I feel the fire right now. <laughs> you're talking. Because iron sharpens iron. It, does. Yes. it really does. So when the fire is on you, someone else is going to catch, catch on catch fire. On fire. <laughs> I wish my soul will catch on fire. My soul is catching on fire right now. Right now. now. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise Thank God. Well, so Pastor much. Leggett, you Amen. are going to be staying with us for a little bit for prayer after the break. We are so Amen. grateful that, for that. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise Thank you. God. Well, up next, we will be praying for your needs and our country. So stay with us. Welcome back to the prayer link. We're going to spend the next couple of minutes praying for your needs. But first, we want to encourage you to email us your prayer request at prayerlink at cbn.org. Amen. And we're going to have Pastor Leggett pray for us right now. Pray for those of you who are watching. Lots of needs that people have. They've written in to us about Pastor Leggett. If you could lead us in prayer for those who are watching, as well as what's happening in our nation, we'd appreciate it. Father God, we come to your throne of grace, realizing that we need God like never before. Father, we ask now that you will touch your people all over this world, all over this nation. Father God, you said when we call on your name, how you will answer and you will show us great and mighty things that we know not of. 
Lord God, there's someone in need of a healing right now. Jesus. God, they need a supernatural miracle. They need a touch from you, God, from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you today right now for the miraculous. Yes. We thank you right now for the dunamis. We thank you right now, oh God, for setting your captives free because God, you said, lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of this world. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Father, we pray right now that you will touch your people's heart. Lord God, that they will realize, hallelujah, to get back to their first love, mm -hmm. to repent and to do their first works in the name of Jesus. Oh God, right now we are dying spiritually, God. Jesus. As the woman of God says earlier, there is a spiritually, a spiritual decline and sure enough, there is a spiritual decline. People need to come back before it's too Jesus. late, God, because Jesus is standing at the door in the name of Jesus. And he loved each and every one of us. And he's saying, come, come while you can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Now stretch your Jesus. hands out over this nation, over mm -hmm. this region, over the domains, over the territory in Jesus' name. Jesus. Let your glory show up, God. Hallelujah. Let your glory come in, God, in Jesus' name. We are hungry for it and we need it right now. Yes. In Jesus' all matchless name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Praise God. Praise Powerful God. Prayer. Thank you so Praise much. Lord. This is a dear Bless friend you. of mine. I know. <laughs> many, many, many years we have been, yes. been friends, and I thank God for you being with us today. What amen. An honor. What Praise a God. Well, up next, we're bringing you the word of the week. Stay tuned. Come home to the sounds of Southern Gospel from CBN Radio. You'll enjoy a rich Southern blend bluegrass, classic gospel, and southern gospel favorites like the Gaithers, the Crab Family, and bluegrass sounds like Mountain Faith. So make yourself at home with the all-new CBN Southern Gospel, now available at cbnradio.com. Welcome back to Prayer Link. And before we go, here's the word of the week from evangelist Matt Brown. When I was younger, I had the opportunity to do piano lessons. I don't know if you've had that opportunity before. Uh, later on in a room like this, you know, went to music class, went to band, and went to choir. And I still remember some of those early songs you learn. I don't know if you uh, recognize this at all. Chopsticks, obviously one of the first things you learn. I remember you go into those lessons and you're trying to just, at the first point, remember all the right notes. And then as you, as you begin to practice more and more, you learn to, it's not just the right notes, but it's to play not only loud, but soft. And how beautiful that can be. And in the same way in our Christian lives, we learn the truth of God's word and we learn the right things to do and to say and how to live our lives. But one of the core truths of the Bible also is gentleness. The Bible calls us to not only play the right notes, share God's truth with the world, but to do it in a way that's gentle, that can become like music, like a beautiful song for the world around us. Well said, Matt. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of the Prayer Link. And until next time, God bless you. And remember, prayer works. Sure does. Amen. Keep praying. That's right. Man. This is so good today.